What is up guys, this is Tony here and today we're doing another Final Cut Pro tutorial and today we're doing a very vague broad tutorial on a simple concept called masking. Now masking can be used in a ton of ways which is why I'm calling this vague and broad. Um, it's basically a type of technique that could be used for doing all sorts of things like field of view. It could be used for doing things like um, some sort of vignette effect. It can also be used to make transitions. So I'd like to show you guys uh, first off that Final Cut Pro only has really one usable, well maybe two usable masks. The first one is a four point mask which allows you to move around four points and mask with it, which means you could do things like this. I'll show you a little example of what you can do. Um, you can kind of uh, take like certain parts like this, like half of the screen, and you can have that keyframed to where it starts here. Whoops, I messed up the only way I did there. Um, it starts over here, and you can keyframe it to move over. That's very basic. Um, but it's really not that great. I mean, the masking that comes with Final Cut Pro, I mean, you could do things like this, whatever that is. I mean, you could really mess around with it and try to figure out what you can do. Um, and I'd recommend trying keyframing uh, these these masks I'm doing right now. You could just keyframe and just try to mess around with that. But i got to be honest, I don't know much of what you can do with the masks that come with Final Cut. They did a really shitty job at it. Um, you can kind of feather things. You can change the roundedness. But most of this is pretty useless. I mean, you can also change the, uh, you can invert it which is really useless, you get what I'm saying. Uh, but So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and show you what is useful and it's a plugin by I believe FCP Effects, FCP Effects, yeah that's it, um, which is this Advanced Masking 2, which is a really nice plugin where you get upwards of 20 points in a mask, which I'll show you right now, all 20. Very impressive. Let me delete this other mask real quick. And uh, in those 20 points you could do all sorts of things, like for example um, on the outside, you can reduce the opacity. And you're probably thinking, why would you want to do that? Well, you can start to do color corrections on the outside. You can start to change the uh, brightness of one you know, inner part or something like that. And you can start to get more variation. So with these uh, really nice masking tools, I'm going to show you guys what you can do. A few of the things you can do with masking and how to use masking properly to uh, create a nice effect um, on your edit. Now, I really, you know, you could use the standard... Uh, masking tools that are found on Final Cut Pro but I'd highly recommend against it and I would recommend that you go ahead and get your own masking tools from some plugins online you could find. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with a 12 point oval just because I think the oval is really good for doing this and with a 12 point oval you can go ahead and find some certain part of the clip that you, you want to do this in and just circle around your scope I'm going to try to do this. Um, when you circle around the scope slowly, and when you're doing this, you're just going to try to get as close to the circle on your scope as possible. Just try to, you don't have to be too, you know, accurate because it's just going to be a little, you can feather it out and things like that later on. And once you have a pretty good uh, circle going around your scope, which we're going to have to like mess around with a little bit more because all these points are like in weird positions, but we'll figure it out. Here we go. So yeah, once you have all of these points ready, if you need to zoom out to get a little bit of a better view, you can just go to 25%. And that usually does the job for when you're trying to mask. So once you have all these points done, you're going to go ahead and turn the outside opacity to zero. And I believe I've done this before, but this is pretty much a masking effect where you can blur the outside of the scope and have a bit of like a field of uh, view effect where only the scope is being focused on. And that's a really cool little thing. You could, you know, change the feathering a bit to make it look a little bit more realistic. Let's go ahead and do that for a second. It's lagging a bit, but there we go. So that looks pretty good there. And uh, you can also do things like uh, turn the opacity on the outside down a bit and have it focus on that. It's a little bit too much, but there you go. Um, and you can also, you know, mess around with all these things. Um, Mask rotation, I don't even know what that is. I'm just going to leave that alone. Um, but yeah, so you can change around with that a lot. And um, that's always a, you know, a cool way to utilize masking. Another way to utilize masking, we're just going to delete this all together, um, is to do a color correction. 
on the mask. So you can have one part of the color, you know, one part of the spectrum color corrected. So let's go ahead and use a point, uh, eight point ra rectangle for this. I almost said rectangle. Um, and for this, you're going to basically go ahead and pull all your points on the rectangle. For some reason, they're not moving with me. Let me uh, just get rid of this. I don't know why it's being so buggy. It's probably because I chose a weird. Is this one going to work? Yes, it is. That was just being weird. I don't know what that was. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to grab all your points, get them out on top. And what you're going to do is you're going to bring your masking points around the fence, sort of, to where they shape around the sky. Like that. And this one could probably come over a bit. So this is how you would color correct a sky, which pretty much is good for... Um, any sort of clip where the sky is a weird color in your color correction and you want to modify it slightly. Um, what you could do with this is just turn your opacity down all of the way. And then, um, let me see right here, you got some uh, mid-tones that you could change here on the sky. And I would recommend when you're doing this to do a lot of feathering. As you can see, the feathering really does help a lot. Um, so you can change around the mid-tones, you can change around the um, the highlights and the shadows, all from here. And that's usually the way you're going to want to do it. You can also change the saturation. That's the wrong one. Let me do inside saturation. And you can get a pretty good color out of that. And you can go ahead and keyframe it from clip to clip its position. The mask position is right here. So you basically just click that, and then every frame, you can just move it around. Um, you have to, you know, move this one by one by one. And this is actually what a lot of people do in AE to get uh, those skies that look really bright and like you know explosive. You can also mask in fire and things like that if you want to get really advanced. Um, you may destroy your editing program. I mean, it might lag out a lot if you don't have a good computer. But it's another little technique that you can do to uh, you know advance your edits in terms of the uh, color correction with masking. Now, once again, like I mentioned earlier, all of this stuff is pretty much only possible with the uh, program I have here. So you probably are going to want to invest into the um, the program. By the way, there's the before and after if you want to look at that. And of course, you can make this a little bit more finite and you know not have the trees having the effect as much. You can just adjust this very simply. Just put a little bit more time into it. I would always recommend that with any of the effects I do in here. Because you got to realize i gotta, I got to do this quick so I can get it uploaded and it's not too long. But anyway, um, that is pretty much my tutorial on masking. Like I said earlier, you really need to get these uh, plugins for masking. Because if you're going to do any masking on Final Cut, you need to do it right. If you look at After Effects, After Effects has literally unlimited point masks. And that's really a great tool to have. And it's one of the most enticing reasons to go over to After Effects for masking. Um, but to be honest, I'd say that the masking tools that I have right here are good enough for what you usually do on a day-to-day. -day. And I would recommend uh, messing around with them and trying to do something uh, kind of cool looking. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any other suggestions for tutorials in the future, go ahead and comment them below. And I'll see you guys next time.